What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Now guys, since running my store, the T3 Shop, for almost exactly a year now, I've come across some questionable watches in my quest to find inventory for the shop. And uh, yeah, this, this episode today, this little rant, actually pertains to a question I get all the time from you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Fake dials. It's 3.02 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okie dokie guys, so typically when we think fake watches or counterfeit watches, we immediately think Rolex, okay? Because let's face it, Rolex does have one of the largest counterfeit markets ever. And I think that, you know, is because Rolex really does have the largest brand equity when we're looking at watch manufacturers as a whole. And here's an example of, you know, a fake Rolex president with a fake dial. But as I said, this more likely than not is just totally fake. Like that's a counterfeit watch. Not only the dial is fake, everything else about that watch is also fake. But believe it or not, there's one company that really outdoes Rolex when we're looking at fake dials specifically, and that would be Omega. That's right, Omega is probably one of the worst offenders when it comes to unauthentic tampering. And I shouldn't say Omega themselves, it's really people that wanna mess with these old Omegas. So let's go ahead and take a look at some. Okay, so here we have a 1950s to 1960s Omega Seamaster, and not a terribly uncommon watch, and this actually is one of the better examples far and away that we will be looking at today. In fact, I think most people, when they take a look at this watch, will think it's totally kosher, it's totally fine. But uh, yeah, the handset looks fine. Uh, the Omega logo looks fine. It looks like it was originally applied there. Uh, but there's one thing that stands out to me when I look at these older vintage watches, and that is the kerning. And kerning is a typography word for just the space in between letters. And uh, yeah, when we look at the Seamaster font, um, the A looks a little little bit weird. Uh, the S and the T are a little bit too blotchy. And then the Omega font, uh, the O is very flat and much closer to the M than the M is to the E. And again, most people would probably not pick up on this. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm some like expert, like <laughs> most people wouldn't know, but I know. No, it's just when you look at these all the time, you pick up on certain things. And uh, to me, it's very clearly a redial, but a very good one, especially when we compare it to other watches we'll be looking at today. Here's a very poor example of one. This is an Omega Seamaster Automatic Small Seconds. And uh, I mean, where do we begin? First of all, when we're looking at the blotchiness of uh, the font and then the kerning, it is all wrong. Uh, yeah, let's start with the Omega font. Uh, as we zoom in here, we can see uh, the O, the M, incredibly blotchy. Uh, the G is lower than all the other letters. The O is higher than all the other letters. The A is really far down. It's almost like they wrote this uh, on a slant. Uh, the S in Seamaster, it's like they wrote it a thousand times. Uh, I don't know what happened with the cursive S-T-E-R. It's like they wrote C Mister. I don't know what's going on there. Automatic, uh, that's also for some reason all slanted. Uh, the O, the M, and the A, very close together, very blotchy. Uh, just a very poorly attempt uh, at refinishing a dial. Terrible. Kind of night and day when we compare it to the first one we looked at. Next up, this watch, uh, you know, I'm, I might go ahead and say that this is totally counterfeit because there are so many things wrong with it. When we look at the date window, uh, the date wheel barely fits. And then uh, the Omega logo that should be applied onto the dial of the Seamaster looks like... Um, it just, everything looks off center, right? And then when we look at the Omega font, uh, it's incorrect. It looks totally like it has been redrawn a thousand times, automatic, looks super weird. And then the Seamaster font, uh, again, it's supposed to be that very stylized, tasteful cursive, uh, but it, again, is incredibly blotchy. So uh, this is 
very clearly a redial, very clearly a touched up dial, not professionally done whatsoever, and uh, just a very bad example. Okay, now here's a very unfortunate example of a very rare, very sought after watch, a triple date moon phase by Omega. This is a very old example, but uh, yeah, absolutely touched up. So when we look at the overall uh, kind of quality of the watch. It's very clearly old, and I guess we could call this patina. Uh, this is a bit too far gone for me. I probably would not wear it. Again, uh, where is the line drawn between something you would consider patina and something you would consider just straight up damage? Well, for me, uh, I think that a good kind of definition for patina is tasteful damage, right? And uh, tasteful aging, maybe we'll say. But where that threshold lies person to person, again, uh, very subjective. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that this is a bit too far gone overall. And what's weird is that that is not touched up. Like there's no attempts to clean the patination, uh, but the Omega logo looks a little bit like hand drawn clearly. And then the Omega font, uh, very clearly hand drawn. And uh, yeah, I think that this is just a very clearly Overall, hand-drawn dial, not very well done, but not the worst. I think some of the other ones we just looked at were way worse than this. But again, the closer I look at it, that E looks slanted, the G looks slanted the other way. I'm just, yeah, very, a huge bummer because again, this is a very desirable triple date moon phase. Which brings us to another example of a triple date moon phase by Omega. This is perhaps, uh, I mean, it, it, this is like immeasurably worse than the other one. Clearly there's no patination on this, but that's because the whole dial is fake. We look at uh, the calendar around the chapter ring and uh, that's very clearly redone. Uh, and then I think the worst part about this is how the applied Omega logo is on top of Omega, the Omega font. Like when would Omega just slap their, their own logo and apply it on top of an Omega font? Like they wouldn't ever do that, right? And an old Omega like this would not have Omega written that way. Uh, so again, you need to educate yourself before you buy these watches. But guys, this watch uh, was listed at over $7,000. Could you imagine spending over $7,000 for this watch just to have such a poorly done example? Yeah, it's. I'm gonna go over why this is actually like a big problem in a moment, but I wanna share some examples with you first. Which brings us to the last example I'm gonna share with you today, and this is by far, I think, the worst example out of the whole episode. Uh, pretty much everything about this watch is fucked up. First of all, it looks like I wrote this when I was in first grade with my non-dominant hand. And uh, Omega Automatic, that, like what is going on there? Seamaster, I think like the first time, the first like four times I read that, it looked like it was misspelled. So literally I may have written, I may have done this when I was like in first grade. Uh, and then calendar, again, this, like all of this is incredibly poorly done. Um, and this should kind of enlighten you in a way that not everything that is listed is, just don't get screwed, okay? See, I got a little bit flustered there. I got a little bit tongue-tied because guys, all of these watches that I'm sharing with you today have been listed as just Omegas. There's been nothing written about there being a touched up dial or a redone dial or just a blatantly fake dial. And herein lies the big issue. The worst part about this is that more often than not, the sellers of these kinds of watches do not disclose the fact that these watches have been touched up, have been redialed, have an inauthentic parts, excuse me. And we can either choose to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, well, you know, these guys just don't know enough to pick up on the fact that these are inauthentic dials, or a more sinister take on this, which they probably do know that these are not authentic dials and they're just not gonna list it in hopes that they just can move the product. And this is in stark contrast with some other sellers. And I'm not trying to pitch you guys my store, the store is doing just fine, but honestly, we take a lot of time and effort into being as descriptive as possible with the products we sell. And there are other really great sellers doing the same thing. They're trying to be as honest and as descriptive 
descriptive as possible so that the consumer knows what they're buying. One of the best compliments I've received recently is that someone said, every time I read a description of one of the watches on your site, I can hear your voice in my head reading it. And uh, again, that's a very, very meaningful compliment to hear that because I'm literally the one writing those descriptions. So literally it is like a mini review each of the watches I list on my site. So I hope you do hear me kind of reading it to you guys because it is my voice writing those uh, descriptions each and every time we upload a watch. So I'm not trying to put any vintage sellers on blast specifically, but I would say anyone selling these kinds of watches please learn enough to be as descriptive and honest as possible. And if you are one of those sellers, uh, that's purposefully kind of leaving out some information there uh, in hopes to not turn anyone off, uh, screw you because you're ruining it for all of us. And the unfortunate thing is judging by the messages I get on a daily basis in my inbox, there are a lot of sellers being a little bit dishonest. Uh, <sighs> I don't judge anybody in my comment section, anybody uh, in my inbox, but it's a huge bummer every time I see a watch enthusiast asking me for my opinion on a watch they just recently purchased and then me taking like one second to look at it and noticing that it has like a fake dial or some fake component or maybe the watch reference number doesn't even exist. Boy, is that an awkward conversation to have. Guys, please, please learn as much as possible before you spend your hard earned money on a watch that might not be real. But guys, here's the deal. Although I would love to be the sole purveyor of vintage watches for you guys, I understand you're buying watches elsewhere and that's great. I hope you support everybody else. That's awesome. When one of us does well, we all do well. But please, please, please don't get screwed. Now at the bottom of my website, www.thetimetellershop.com, I have a big disclaimer. It says, I seek to end the guessing game when it comes to vintage watch collecting even if if you don't purchase a watch from us at the Time Teller shop, you deserve to know what to look for and what questions to ask when shopping for a vintage watch. So if you click that disclaimer, that little window, that little link, it says click here to learn how to buy a vintage watch like a pro, because guys, let's face it, again, I understand you guys are looking a bunch of different places to find a watch you might want. So even if you don't buy from my store, I want you guys to get the info you need and I want you to know what questions to ask so you don't get burned. So if you're looking to buy a vintage watch and it doesn't happen to be at the Time Teller shop, that's fine, no, I'm, not, I'm not taking it. Not taking it personally! But please watch that other episode so you know what to do and you can be happy and confident with the watch you've purchased. And if you do wanna support my store, hey, that's awesome as well. We do weekly restocks, everything is serviced with a one year warranty and everything, everything you see there is handpicked by me and uh, if I wouldn't wear it, I wouldn't sell it. It's as simple as that. So guys, I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, yeah, I hope that this kind of kind of enlightened you a little bit that not everyone out there is honest. You need to know what to look for because some of these really cool old Omegas, if it looks kind of off, probably is. All right, guys, thank you so much. Check out all the links in the description below uh, that'll take you to my Amazon affiliate store. We got a bunch of modern watches there, a bunch of watch toolkits, watch winders, watch straps, everything the watch collector needs. And if you're looking for a vintage watch, please uh, check out www.thetimetellershop.com, the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one-year warranty. Again, handpicked by this guy. So like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Join the channel and support us. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it.